this is a three quarter horse, three quarter inch shank shaper. This is a four speed shaper. Just a few samples of some of my cutters that I have. And we talked about the different sizes. For something like this shaper cutter, I run at about 7,000 RPM. Something like this, I drop it down to anywhere, sometimes down to 1,700, depends what kind of lumber I'm using, how much tear out. Uh, most of the time I'm running about, uh, about 4,500 RPMs with this. This weighs about 10 pounds. This is a steel one. You can get aluminum ones, they're a lot more expensive, but uh, this one works just fine. This, this machine has plenty of horsepower to run it. This is a cove cutter, three quarter inch of bore. The different sizes are half inch, three quarter, and one inch. Three quarter inch is definitely the most common. This one is the one inch. And also they give you the bushings to drop in there to uh, really set down to three quarter. I definitely wouldn't use this on anything less than uh, three quarter uh, horse, three quarter inch shank shaper. Along with the shapers, uh, there are also uh, bearings, which are called rub collar in the shaper world. So usually you have your, your rub collar and it sits, it sits flush with your cutter. You want to offset, you take your rub collar and put it on there if you want just that flush, but if you want a little flay in there, you can reduce your uh, rib collar down and give it a little uh, flay. So we're going to take this apart here in just a second. I'm going to get these out of the way. I've already got this set up, so I'm not going to change the height adjustment too much. I am going to lower it just a little bit because it was a little tight. I've got my dust collector hooked up to it, which is definitely a must on this machine. And I've got these set. My side fences, you can see I've got them cut into the actual shaper cutter. These are all uh, replaceable, so you can just change them anytime you want to. When you're running a narrow panel, narrow into the panel through, uh, you want as much support as you can possibly get here. If you get in there and you don't have a rope collar set underneath this, uh, you can get in there, especially with the uh, power feeder, that can rock in and that can just it can mess your cut up. So I put a rub collar underneath, uh, underneath my cutter. I line my, I line my sides up with that rub collar. So when that comes across, that just barely hits that rub collar and comes on through on the outside. When you're uh, cutting a race panel, uh, your fences are parallel with each other. When you come across, there's not any gap here. Uh, sometimes when you use a, a shaper cutter, you, want, you take off just a little bit to clean up that edge so you'll have a little Cove here, so you can uh, adjust this out to where it, uh, when, it when the board comes through, it's actually kissing this fence at the same time. So that was cutting off a little bit here. This is still coming out flush. So without that rub collar, it's definitely a, a safety hazard. Also, I, I use the uh, fire feeder. Without that, you can't hardly cut this whole cove in one shot. If you don't, if you're just doing it by hand, trying to hold it down by hand, you're uh, you're probably not going to come out even on the corners here. And they're always, it's just always hard to uh, to get that to come out even with the power feeder. It holds it down nice and firm, straight across. The power feeder is definitely a nice safety feature. Plus, it uh, improves your work piece and, and your speed and efficiency. So we're going to go ahead and take this apart to show you how I set this up. Basically, we're going to slide these back so I can get my cutter head, or cutter head out. So we just slide back. I need to lock this into place. Fits into a hole in the shank. Pulls the shank nice and sturdy. I just unbolt it here and then pull out the spacers. Uh, and then the rub collar and the cutter head. The rub collar is just pretty much flush with the inside of the shaper cutter. That way it gives you your full depth of cut. And basically it's just dropping the back collar on there. Got your rub collar, got a little spacer there just to make sure that rub collar doesn't uh, hit your carbide uh, cutters here. So I've done that before and 
yeah, chips in that really makes you pretty upset. <laughs> so, you just drop that back on there, put your spacers on, make sure you have the nice enough spacers there that it, uh, when you lock it down, it uh, locks down tight. Just tighten it up. Pull your pen out. too far. I'll back it off a little bit so that cutter isn't hitting. Spinning free now. Kind of was just a little thick here. I'm going to drop this down just a hair. I did write down and up on it. Sometimes you get kind of confused of which way you want to go and you want to use it just to, uh, move it just a slight bit. Yeah. Sometimes you get going the wrong direction and then you don't know where you're at. So I'm going to drop that down just a hair. Lock it back in place and try to adjust that. Four and a half inches wide, so it's spinning pretty good on the outside. Uh, even a piece that wide, but this, this is kind of scary if you're just holding down by hand. That's why the power feeder comes in. So now I got that just a little bit too too thin, so I'm gonna raise it back up a little bit. Try it one more time. going through quite fast enough. It wasn't even cut. I got a little burn on this end. I wanted to wobble a little bit. Again, that's where the power feed really comes into play. So, yeah, I'm still pretty thin there. That's why it's always good to have a practice piece to get everything set up. So we're going to talk a little bit about the power feeder. Uh, there's a multitude of adjustments on that. We're going to go over here in just a minute. Um, it's up and down, in and out, back and forth. It can move in about any direction you want to. So all these pivots, uh, mechanisms, raise it, lower it. I talk about some of the uh, levers that uh, used to adjust this. One of the ones you use the most is this one here. It just pulls the, uh, lets you pull the power feeder around, get it out of the way so you can get to your cutter heads. The stop lever has a pivot point that lets you rotate the head back and forth this direction. This lever here also has the pivot point here that lets you uh, rock the power, the power feeder back and forth in this direction. So this way it can, it, it'll, the rollers will stay level with your board. You want your, you want your rollers uh, full contact width wise and uh, level wise from front to back. This lever here runs this big shaft back and forth. You want the cutter head to be pretty much centered uh, in between the, the second and third roller as it comes out. You want your main pressure on the first two rollers, the, the ones that come out, just a single roller. You can pull that in and you can adjust this back and forth here. Uh, this is your up and down lever and your, your lock for your up and down. All these levers put together makes a kind of a complicated setup. But once you get it set up, it's well worth the uh, time to, to do that for speed, efficiency, and safety. Another one important thing is that uh, you want your power feeder just a little bit closer to the fence on the out feed as you do on the in feed. It allows the board to be pulled tight against the fence. 
If not, sometimes it wants to work away from the fence. So, so how much a, how much angle do you want? Just a very small amount of angle. It doesn't take a lot. Okay. Just a little bit of an angle there, so it holds it tight against the fence. Uh, besides that, that's. So what you have right there is maybe more exaggerated than what you need. Yeah. Once you roll that around, so see from here to there, it, it changes quite a bit. So it kind of depends how far your your uh, rollers are away from your fence. Uh, just pulling it that much, you can see how much of an angle you pull it over here. It's getting pretty straight. So that's when you come back to this lever here and, uh, and, and tweak it a little bit to pull that in. What happens when your uh, roller gets too close to your cutter? Well, you cut into your roller. Why don't you show them a cut up roller? Well, I can show them my cut up roller. <laughs> this is on Chuck's this list is... of things to replace. So what happens a lot of times is you don't get this, uh, this uh, mechanism tightened down. And what, when that uh, starts pulling through, it pulls your uh, power feeder into your shaper cutter, and that's why you get uh, get that damage. Now, is that because it wasn't tightened properly? Yeah, this just wasn't tightened down properly. You think you have to get it pretty tight, but you really want to crank down on that thing. You got to put a little bit, then just a little bit more to make sure that that thing is good and solid. It's, okay. You don't want that moving. So that power, it will pull it right in. It will pull it right into that cutter head. These rollers are pretty old. I've had this for about 25 years. And so the rubber's getting pretty hard, worn out. Tonight might be the night they get replaced. what you want right there. It's got a little bit of play to it, but uh, it fits tight enough that it uh, lets it expand and contract. Running that through the second time, kind of caught a little bit, kind of wanted to pull it into the cutter, even with that uh, rub collar on there, still wanted to pull it in a little bit. That's what's nice about being able to run this all at one time. If you, if you need to run these uh, narrow ends across twice, the uh, roller on the power feeder doesn't have enough bearing surface. So it kind of wants it to uh, wants to pull in a little bit, and it can really mess your cut up.
Here we have a race sound. You see this side came out pretty good. It was running with the wood grain. This side here burned a little bit. Not too much damage there at all, but uh, it take a little sanding to get that out. Uh, you always want to sand your end grains really well because that's definitely going to take stain a lot more. Uh, and that's so you just need to hand sand those for real well. But that's a uh, side panel for the uh, nightstand. We're just going to sand that out real quick. This is alder. It sands out pretty good. Sometimes you get into cherry. It burns a little harder. It's a little bit harder to get out. But it's just. Uh, Just about that fast to get rid of those burn marks. That's pretty fast. Okay, we got our panel inside our frame. For right now, just to test fit, I undersized the panel just a little bit so we can use our space balls. So it's, it's moving quite a bit. Which um, you don't have to use the space balls, you can tighten up your panel just a little bit. Uh, depends on how you want to how you want to do it. But knock this part. You can see there, we have quite a bit of gap. So, we can take our space balls. Hey Chuck, that's pretty tight. So we might have to cut these space balls in half. I do that a lot of times. But they're, they're almost a quarter of an inch thick, so uh, it's, it's taking up quite a bit of a gap. So you can just play around with them? Yeah, you can cut them in half. I do it. Well, we'll see what happens here. Baseballs are jumping ship. They have a tendency to fall out on you. So now we got our panel with our space balls in there. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. That's pushing pretty hard. Is that because of the space balls? That's because of the space balls. It's probably a little thicker than they need to be. But they'll suck right up. Now your panel's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. It still has enough room to Expand and contract a little bit. It's not going to expand this way. It's going to expand and contract this way. This is a small panel. It's not going to move much. So as long as it's good and solid in there, we're good to go. That's our test fit. I'm going to glue it up here in a minute. Oh, so another thing I want to mention. Uh, when you put your clamps on, hold your clamps back from the corners just a little bit. That way you can get your tape in there and squirt things up across. So we're 17 and 16, 17. So we're just a hair over 17. So that's good enough for right now. If it is off, a, if it is out of square a little bit, you can actually offset your clamps a little bit. These are parallel clamps, a little bit harder, but you can you can offset your clamps a little bit to kind of help pull it around. But. Uh, you always want to check, make sure you're square.